Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today we're going to be doing um, a lovely uh, fall foliage watercolor, but we're going to be doing it right at the beginning of the seasonal change. So if you're in an area that experiences autumn or fall and the changing of leaves, um, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So that time of year when the leaves just start to change and lose their green, color and start to gain the oranges, browns, purples, and a whole variety of hues um, seep into uh, their colors. So we're going to work on that today. You can see here there's still a lot of green going on, but we're starting to get yellows and oranges and even some purples in here. So let's get started. First, I am working on Fabriano Artistico paper. This happens to be actually a 300 pound um, cold pressed paper, so super thick and heavy weight. You do not have to use this heavy weight paper. Um, whatever you have, I generally work on 140 pound cold press, but I didn't have any of that laying around today. Um, I am also using my Core Paints QOR by Golden. Here is my palette. I'll go through colors as I use them. And I'm using a round brush. This one is a Princeton Aqua Elite size eight round brush. So whatever you have on hand will work great. So let's get started. We're gonna build a couple of different leaf structures or shapes. So leaf structures can come in a wide variety of shapes and colors and sizes. Um, sometimes they're larger leaves like this. Sometimes they're stems with lots of smaller rounded leaves or longer, thin, and skinny leaves. Uh, this one has lots of tiny li little leaves um, that are parallel to each other. Some are diagonal to each other. So we are not going to be building any particular type of leaf or naming them. We're just going to go ahead and build some different leaf structures that we think look interesting. So I'm going to be doing pretty much three different styles. These larger leaves, rounded ones, and then these more pointed ones. All right, so on that sample I showed you, I did put some tape in the center, um, which we can do again right now. I'm gonna take a piece of just masking tape. This happens to be yellow masking tape. You do not have to use yellow. I usually use blue painter's tape. This is a super heavy duty paper, so I'm not too worried about the tape damaging it at all. All right, I put this in the middle so that way, if you ever wanted to make something like a card and put some kind of written sentiment in here, this masks that off so you can do that and we'll paint above and below it. So the first thing I am going to do is pull out the two colors I wanna work with, and I'm gonna work on these two types of leaf structures here. These pointed, the leaves are on the stem diagonal from each other. And I'm gonna use sap green and a little dyrolide yellow for those. So pulling out some sap green in my palette here. There we go. So you can see what I'm doing. So pulling out sap green and then here in this one, I'm going to clean this out a little bit. There we go. All right. So pulling in some Dyrolide yellow, which is just a warm yellow color. And I'm going to add that to the green as I paint or add the green to the yellow as I paint. So you can do it either way. You'll get slightly different results, but I'm going to paint my leaves first in the yellow this time. So I'm going to take my round brush, roll it in my paint, come up with a nice little point on my brush. And then I am going to give myself a little stem to work off of here. I'm going to press down, pull and pull up, press down, drag and pull up. So you can see I'm making these nice long pointed leaf structures and I'm going um, every other one here on the stem. So they're not parallel to each other. They're kind of at a diagonal from each other. So now that I have that, I'm going to kind of go back over. I'm going to go back over my stem. Now this is still wet. It's important that the lower layer remains wet. And I'm going to drop in lots of green here. So 
So you can see I have this changing leaf and I'm going to drop in some more yellow. And I didn't clean my brush off completely. I kind of let it get a little muddy with the green and the yellow. And now I'm going to leave it and let it dry and just let those two colors kind of mix and mingle and come together. A nice little wet on wet experiment. Just judging around a few of those areas. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing down below. This one I'm gonna do kind of in the opposite direction, trying not to make them identical. Feel free to turn your paper to make it work for you. And dropping in that green right over top of the yellow. And I'm gonna let this one, I'm not going to add any more yellow on top. I'm gonna see what happens and just let them mix and mingle with that brighter, lighter yellow color. All right, so we have two of those structures. I'm gonna put in one with more rounded leaves, but I'm gonna change my color. So I'm gonna use sap green but I'm gonna pick up some phthalo blue to add it to my sap green to cool down my sap green. See how we're making it kind of a darker, cooler green color, more of a bluish green. And now I'm gonna put another leaf structure in here. This one, let's see, I'm gonna come out this way and I'm just gonna do three and I'm gonna make them rounded. Rinse off my brush a little, get some of that paint off and just work with some water to lighten the colors a little bit. You can see how I let those two touch each other and run together. And I'm gonna pick up a little purple. I have a little dirolide, or um, dioxazine purple here. I'm gonna throw a little of that in at this base. And transparent pyro orange. So I have an orange color here that I'm just pushing in you can see my orange here. To this green. There we go. So kind of a tricolored leaf there, but now I'm gonna do it on the other side. All right, so let's work on this other side. Let's do two of these over here. I'm gonna do one here I'm going to do one rounded structure here. And you can see I'm leaving them kind of wet. I, I don't want, I want to use a decent amount of water and pigment so they stay wet. They don't dry too quickly on me. Using cotton paper really helps with that. Picking up some of that orange, dropping that in there. And you don't have to drop the orange or the other colors in the same spots every time. You can. Um, put them in different areas. It doesn't always have to come from like the base or the top. All right, and I'm gonna do one more of these kind of off in this direction here with three leaves. And this one I'm running out of paint, but you know what? I'm gonna just add some water to it and let these be a little bit lighter. I'm overlapping this structure over here. And yours, you can do however you want. You can, um, after you kind of learn these shapes, you can combine them in any number of ways to create interesting compositions that are different every time. Dropping in that orange. And I'm just gonna leave that like that while those dry. All right, let's come back to our yellow. I have my dirolide yellow here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to it. So I had my dioxazine purple and that's going to brown it out a little bit. It's going to neutralize the color. 
So I have more of a brown color. I'm gonna do some slightly larger kind of leaves that come right from the base here. So a bunch of the leaf is behind, making sure the edges aren't too perfect. I do that one there. That is still wet, so I don't wanna mess with it too much. Do one over here. I'm gonna leave some little white spots inside it like that. And then I'm gonna drop a little bit of green into this. But watch, I'm going to create a very yellow green over here. So using my sap green and lots of yellow, I'm just gonna drop in some green areas. We're gonna kinda come right along this white highlight there. There we go. And I'm gonna let these dry and then bring in some other layers of leaves on top, but I don't want to get too crowded in here without things drying first. Otherwise, it'll start to get all muddy together. So let yours dry and then you can continue to layer. All right, everything is nice and dry and we're gonna put some more layers to create a little bit more depth. I'm gonna pull out some raw umber, that's this dark brown color, nice dark cool brown. And let's see, um, let's go with some more of this orange, this transparent pyro orange. I'm gonna take some of this and make just another leaf right over top of this one here. Let that dry. And maybe one more right here. I'm gonna tuck this one behind. So I'm gonna go right up to the edge. And I'm gonna drop in a little sap green into these orange ones that we just did. Again, this isn't a full change yet. The leaves still are retaining some of their green hues as their mid mid change. All right, so my brown, which I had mentioned first but then didn't use, my brown, I'm going to use the very tip of my brush. Now, if you have a smaller brush, this would be a great time to bring it out if you have a size one or a rigger. Let me see what I have here. I have this size one um, with a long bristle. So I'm gonna use this for some of these details. But if you have a great brush with a really fine tip on it, a size eight or a six could work really well also. So I'm gonna put in some of these twigs, like in the fall as things start to fall off. So I'm just gonna take some dark brown and put these fine lines. It's just another texture on top. And I'm gonna put like little dots at the end and connect them. And what would this be? This would be like just little brambles and twigs that you find in the fall as, as leaves fall off of things like what's left over. But they give it this extra um, kind of delicate, you know, these are really thin and delicate. So it gives it just some more texture. something a little different than the leaves themselves. You don't always have to paint things exactly realistic to how they appear in the world. You can just invent things. A 
It's one of the best parts of making art. You can make things super realistic, inspired by, so they have some qualities of what we see in real life. Or you can just make things up that don't even exist anywhere in the world. So I'm just turning my paper. Don't be afraid to turn your paper. So many people are afraid to turn their paper. Especially beginners, they just don't even realize it's an option yet. But you can definitely turn your paper so you're not painting over something that's still wet that you've already painted. All right, I think that's enough of those. And then one more kind of leaf structure that I'm going to paint. I'm going to grab my size six here is just going to be um, one that has very tiny leaves and is, but the leaves are parallel to each other. All of these leaves have like some, uh, like are a little asymmetrical. These are going to be more symmetrical. They're going to be parallel to each other. So let's do one here. I'm just going to come kind of opposite this way. And they're going to be these tiny little, again, changing the, sh the size, the color to create layers of interest and texture. And you we can add these in wherever we feel we need a little bit more. This will be like the darkest shape on here. So wherever we need to pop up the contrast. So you don't want to add too many of them because a little goes a long way. There we go. And you can see these I made a little further away from the stem itself. And I'm going to come in with my smaller brush boop, 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 and add in these tiny little stems. There we are. So you can continue to layer and layer. What do we all think? Let's take off our tape and we can see our inside. Hopefully it's nice and clean. There we go. So we have a nice clean center. We could write something in there. We could create these shapes on, or this, these um, leaf designs on cards. Uh, you can create a wall hanging, all kinds of different things. And you don't have to mask off something in the center. You could put them in a lot of different arrangements. That's just what I happen to do today. So happy painting, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this fall foliage, um, just the turn of the fall season tutorial. Don't forget to like this video, comment on it, uh, follow my channel. If this is your first time here and you're not a follower yet, I would greatly appreciate it. And check out the description uh, for supplies and materials that we used in this video. All right, y'all take care and happy painting.